Rust, the programming language, absolutely, positively sucks. Okay, okay, okay. Got zero upvotes. It's on Rust. Uh, pretty funny. Um, I'm quite confident that I'll get torn to shreds for writing this post and called stupid, but I really don't care. Love it. You, you, this, get on Twitter, okay? That, you got a home already. I have to call a spade a spade. Yes! <laughs> the Emperor has no clothes. The Rust programming language is atrocious. It is horrible, and I wish it a painful and swift death. Is he trying to say, like, swift as in, like, swift? The programming language? Like, is that what he's, is the secret? Is that what we're trying to see here? I've been programming for well over 30 years. I'm quite good at it, usually. Okay. I have been told by many coworkers and managers that I'm super fast. Well, not in Rust. That is okay. Uh, no one's fast to begin with in Rust. I've used quite a lot of languages over the years, though I am by far most proficient in Java. I started working before Java even existed, so I programmed in C professionally for 10 years too. Then I switched to Java. I recall when I learned Java, I thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Okay, same here. Now, here I am, forced to use Rust for a project at work, and it is beyond painful. Okay. 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 I, I like where this is going in some sense. I really, you know... I'm just going to assume that this is not a troll post and that it's a real legitimate post. And this is not someone who's used Rust for like three days and is upset about it. I'm just super, I'm curious. Here we go. If it's just simply borrow checker issues, that will be sad, right? Because you kind of get over those once you kind of get them, but then you kind of comes back later on and then you get over those ones. Then it comes back again. Then it's hard to get over those ones. Uh, here we go. All the advice out there is to go slow, take your time, etc., etc. It is usually unrealistic in the real world work environment when you have to actually accomplish a task for work. I need to write something that is highly multi-threaded and performant. What I uh, what let's see, I need what I need. It's not like I have the luxury to spend months building up to what I need from Rust. This is a good critique, right? It's a perfectly fine critique, right? Especially if you're not proficient in Rust. And you're being thrown on a project, and you're time constrained. Rust would be horrible experience. Like I am fully on that team. That would be a horrible experience to be like, you need to get this done right now with Rust and threads. You'd be like, what the f are you doing? Right? It'd be terrible. All right. Right off the bat, as a total Rust newbie, I'm hitting all kinds of rough edges in Rust. For example, I'm trying to use uh, Rust Squealite. Uh, it would be, let's see, it would be natural to stash DB prepared statements in a thread local for a reuse in my multi-threaded code. I can't pass the connections around because I need them in a C callback. Too much detail here, I know. So I have to be able to look them up. Alas, after banging my head against the wall for a full day, I'm just giving up on the thread local approach because I simply can't get it to work. Part of the problem is that I can't stash a prepared statement in the same thread local struct as the connection from which they are created due to lifetime limitations. It also seems you can't really use two thread locals, one for a connection and one for prepared statements either. If there's a way to do it, I can't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows you don't actually write Rust for a real project. It's purely to tell people you use Rust. It's not like actual Rust. Yeah, you use Tokyo. And you don't think about thread locals and all that. You just try to program it like it's JavaScript. I love it. Everyone knows this. Okay, right off the bat. Uh, oh, gosh. Also, right off the bat, I'm having trouble with using async and trade functions. <laughs> Poor guy. Dude, this poor guy. Assuming he really is a good programmer. Does exactly what I did just recently. Try to throw async and trade functions. Then you end up just getting all sorts of just, just the world's most annoying problems with it. I tried to get it working with async trade crate. But I'm failing there too. Yeah, especially if you have impulse in there. All in all, Rust is a nightmare. It is overly verbose, convoluted, hard to read, slow to compile, and lifetimes are a real cruel joke. <laughs> Googling for what I need rarely results in good answers. I'm truly convinced that all people who claim Rust is great are either lying to themselves or others, or it is just a hobby for them. It shouldn't be this hard to learn a language. Rust feels like a major step back from Java. 
I had to rant because there are so many purple Kool-Aid drinkers out there on the Rust front. I call BS. Okay, okay, okay. Your average Reddit rant, I guess. Okay, this is this is exciting. Now it's time. Now it's time. Okay, we're about to get into the good stuff now. Yum, purple uh, Kool-Aid skill issue. Yeah, the infinite skill issue. Yeah, if you just write Rust for two years, you're going to be able to easily do this, okay? This is such a simple task he's trying to do. You just need multiple years of experience and a few months to get it done, okay? I don't see what the big deal is. Obviously, skill issue. All right, anyways. Right off the bat, as a total Rust newbie, I'm hitting all kinds of rough edges in Rust. Okay, we've already read that. I'm the maintainer of Rust Squeal Light. It's true. There are patterns you might be used to in C. Uh, Squeal Light uh, use that don't translate well to Rust. Uh, this is for safety reasons. Statements borrowed from the connection, which will definitely prevent the things you're trying to do. Instead, you should use dot .prepare each time or prepare cache uh, if it's a large, complex query. It's fine. Okay. Thanks for confirming that I can't do what I was trying to do. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, nice. Okay. So there's... I like that the the, the, the Rust the rust squeal light guy came in here and been like, well, you know, it's a little bit harder than that. All right, let's let's what's another one? Uh, you're trying to write code in a way that is fundamentally different from the Rust way. Well, wants you to. That's the crux of it. Oh, ooh, I missed it. Okay, here. Okay, hold on. You started by learning. Let's see. You started. Okay, hold on. So you started learning Rust by trying to make something multi-threaded that also interops with C instead of starting with something simpler so you can learn and understand how the borrow checker. That's a recipe for disaster. So I mean, to be completely fair and on this guy's side, you could just do that with Go. You could probably do it with Zig. Probably do it with OCaml. You could probably do it with most languages. <laughs> you're, I mean, I understand what it's like when you're. This is a professional project. You just gotta do what you gotta do. You know, uh, you're trying to write code in a way that is fundamentally different from the way Rust wants you to. That's the crux of it. Start smaller, learn what it wants from you. Then uh, let's see. Then writing what you need here will be significantly easier. It sounds like you're trying to write things in an object-oriented manner. Don't do that. Rust isn't object-oriented. I, I do love. I do love this as a statement. This is kind of like, it reminds me of React devs as well, um, right? React devs are like the, the amount of times I've heard you're not doing it the React way, and yet like you can't in the real world. It's just very hilarious. It's a lot of you're doing it wrong. Just trust us. You're doing it the wrong way. Uh, rethink best practices. Wow. Can you divine from that from what I posted? You must be clairvoyant. Oh, dang. This guy's getting angry. Uh, it's amazing how the Rust community gaslights everyone that doesn't fall for the hype. Toxic. <laughs> Maybe if the Rust community wanted to discuss, uh, discourage any attempt from being remotely ob object-oriented, then Chapter 17 in the Ru Rust book titled Object-Oriented Programming Features of Rust should be removed. I did not attempt anything not referenced in the official docs. They have a chapter on traits and how to use them in the object-oriented way. And they have tons of written, let's see, and they have tons written on async and await. Yeah, only an idiot would assume you could put both features together. Silly me. <laughs> no. Hey, uh, he's uh, confirming a skill issue. There's some there, there's some skill issue there, but I do I do really like that it's actually at zero, which I bet if you saw the stats, how many downvotes do you think are happening, and how many upvotes are happening? Oh, this is this is just outrageous. Um, yeah, I'd say that this is not very good communication. As for the thread local, what is object oriented about that? Squeal Light explicitly states that you can't share connection among threads. Trying to stash prepared connections in thread locals is perfectly reasonable to assume should be doable. Negative three. Yeah. If you're getting borrow checker complaints, that is the definition of doing something it doesn't want you to do. No clairvoyance to it. <laughs> Got him. Well, you did say lifetime issues, so... Bar checker? <laughs> Who is clairvoyance? Yeah. All right, let's see if there's any other good top ones. Okay, just take a step back. Imagine you're brand new to C, and for your first project, you encounter async, squeal light, 
Uh, three, which is very easy to make pointer mistakes with. Concurrency, proper thread asynchronization, etc. Of course, that's going to be a daunting and extremely error prone. Yeah. Now getting uh, now getting Rust to compile the first time is painful, extremely. But I guarantee that the first time it does, it will do exactly what you expect. No seg faults, no thread races, no async management, no my struct string should print hello world, but it says give it 0.5% of your 30 years experience with the other languages. You'll find a, uh, you'll kind of find a, oh my goodness, you'll kind of hit enlightenment. I have to think about the same lifetime things when I write C. The compiler just doesn't know about them. Of course, we're always ready to help when you get stuck. Also, for what it's worth on performance, Rust scales extremely well. Getting the single-threaded proof of concept is hard and takes time. Turning it into something that handles 10,000 requests per second on 16 threads is almost trivial, significantly easier than C. So maybe just a single-threaded thread, uh, single threaded, uh, a better place to start. Single-threaded is a better place to start. Okay, I actually like, I think this is actually really reasonable advice right here. This is this guy, who this guy right here, Tre Trev, I think we should um I think we should congratulate this guy because this is exactly right. If you really were to do threading and everything in C, uh t talking with the database, doing async stuff, like the first time you do it, like you're going to just make a lot of really bad decisions. Then you're going to make a lot of really bad decisions again. And then after doing it maybe 10 times, you'll start making good decisions. And I think he's 100% right, which is that the compiler, the good thing about Rust is that when the compiler does build, it's pretty much doing the thing you want it to do. Which is not true of C. It will build and not do the right thing. Versus this doesn't build until it does the right thing. Which I think is actually a really good, it's a good one. Sounds like the company you're doing this for has poor engineering management practices. This isn't Rust's fault. Okay, not not bad. Uh, the smells like bait. I'm almost certain of it. I can't believe a programmer with 30 years experience can't handle his manager. When a task is bigger than your skills, you let your management know early so they can assign someone better suited. When that is not an option, you let them know you can deliver with your pr uh, preferred language. No need to suffer from this. Interesting, interesting take here. What do you think about that? Do you think it's a, uh, do you think this is bait? High fives all around? Yeah, we're still... No, I don't think it's bait either. Uh, I think OP is ge uh, being genuine. I think it's frustration that something is turning out to be much, much, comp much more complicated than it feels like it should be. I can understand that. I remember going through similar pains when I was originally learning Rust, although I didn't have stress of having to deliver an actual product. Yeah, I think this is... I think this is good. I assure you, it's not bait. Funny you say about doing it in another language, because I also have it in Java, which I wrote on my own time, weekends. The problem is, I've been told that there's little chance that the company would go with Java, despite the team being all Java developers. Because someone, some emerging religion that thou shalt write a system code in Rust. Okay, why are people downvoting that one? That feels mean. I'm going to help the guy. Get it up. Okay, the... That feels fine. Wrote it on his own time. Weekends. Feels bad. All right. I don't want to go too deep into these comments. Any, any other good advice in here? All right. All right. So let's 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 read one more. Sure. Uh, let's upvote. At least, you know, uh, see, I personally can relate to that one. Yeah, we can all relate to that one, right? We've all done things on the side to make the project work. And then the guy is probably uh, not sincere. You don't think so? Uh, I'm really sorry to hear you're having problems. Inflammatory language aside, I found this subreddit to be genuinely helpful with getting a handle on some of Rust's harder concepts. It certainly sounds like you've been thrown into the deep end as far as using Rust is concerned, and I think that's terribly irresponsible of your employers. I probably, uh, let's see, I'm probably a few decades your junior, so I won't pretend to know the answers to your problems. I will say that in general, Rust highly encourages clear ownership of data throughout the program and discourages mutability as much as possible. I'd also suggest writing your programs in the dumbest way you can first and performance optimized later. So I love this advice. Whenever I write anything in Rust to begin with, oh man, go with strings, clone them, do whatever you got to do at first just to get like, what is the, because the thing is, is Rust, I'd say that one thing that Rust does, which is worse than every other language, is that it encourages, um, like, trying to set in the abstraction you need early. And that can be such a huge disaster. And so that's one thing I really love about just writing it dumb and just clone as fast as possible, is that you will write and you will abstract and you will do the wrong thing 
every single time in the Rust version, and you'll do it way earlier than you'd normally do in any other language, and you'll do it way worse than you should have done it, and your performance will still be dog water because you just don't understand Rust. Like, Rust is actually a genuinely, again, it's a genuinely hard language to do well because it's easy just to clone everything. It's hard to do it well. You know, it is really hard to do it well. And so I think this is this is just fantastic advice. Just get the thing running. Don't worry about anything else. Fast enough can be good. We can make it better later on. Uh, because of Rust compile time guarantees and really elegant testing using cargo test and benchmarking with Criterion, it's really easy to modify the Rust programming. Multi-threaded? Don't bother. Write a single-threaded version first and using Tokyo or Rayon to add multi-threaded afterwards. Yep. Caching? Too hard. You can use prepare cache. Yep. Uh, bit packing booleans for minimal memory usage? Just waste uh, RAM now and make more efficient later. Love it. Lifetime's not working? Just clone the data. Don't bother with references. Uh, deriving the clone trade is a one-line code usually and surprisingly fast. Compile time slow? Yeah, not much you can really do about that. I'd suggest using Cargo Check to minimize your issues, but sadly, the Rust compiler does a lot of work on each compilation. Yep. This is such good advice. So, for anyone out there that's struggling with Rust, this is your advice. Honestly, this is the most straightforward way to write good Rust programs. Um, Rust is for big brains. Yeah, I, Grug use probably, you know, Grug generally uses Zig over Rust. I get that. Uh, just because Zig, no need big brain. Small brain, good. Uh, but I, I do really want to go back to that one more time, which is Rust, it's kind of something I've been observing. I didn't know how to put it into terms until, honestly, I read the Grug thing. But I constantly abstract in Rust faster than any other language. And the reason why I do that, again, is because of lifetimes, references, all these things. I find that I go way too fast. What I should do, just clone. Just clone. Enjoy it. Whatever, right? Make it fast when you need to make it fast. For now, make it work, right? And I think that if I could just enjoy that advice more often in my Rust career, I would actually be a lot better at it already. Uh, anyways... Uh, Rust that makes you want to make it fast, dude. That is the fact. That's uh, that's one of the alert that. So I really wish that Rust was never sold as a fast language. I really wish it was sold as a great type system and safety language first, right? Like never say the word fast. You know that can just be observed, right? Every time someone uses it, it just feels really creamy smooth, and you go, "Wow, that's so good. That's so nice. Why we should do that better." Right? Because the moment you want to make it fast, you do things that are hard. It's the type system. It's the enums. Uh, right? I love tagged unions. I think tagged unions are a great way uh, to do stuff. I think I, I do. I, I'm very, I really wish the whole Shepherd Oasis thing with Rust and Rust Conf and all that didn't happen because I would love to see compile time Rust. Dude, comp time Rust would be amazing. Right? Because the macro system, I'm honestly too stupid for it. The amount of time you have to spend to become great at macros is just like an enormous, an enormous amount of time. The amount of time you have to spend uh, understanding something that's not that complex, <laughs> such as, but not limited to comp time, it's like tiny, small brain, right? Uh, and I mean, the traits, the traits are just interfaces. The trait system, the thing in which allows you to associate a type with another thing that's used elsewhere like however they set it up whatever that thing is to me that's amazing and the fact that you have to bring in the trait to make the function appear i think is both great but also horrible right uh how good do i feel at rust i'm pretty good at rust i can program it i can program your standard cli application probably faster than most people in rust and i could make it with lifetimes and all that second time around pretty quick i'm i'm okay at rust uh when it when i really where i really start failing is like impulse with async and um traits right when i c combine all the impulse and everything together and then try to do it i always find that i just like st i start running into really difficult things um you know what i mean anyway so you can do some good performance tuning in rust yeah I, we can we can make it work we can make it work anyways hey guess what the name is the primogen. Async is really not that hard. 
Honestly, like you just have to think of it like a pole model. Think of it like an iterator and it will make things a little bit easier. The moment you think of it like, like JavaScript, which is kind of like a hot async, it's hard. But if you think of it like cold async or an, uh, an iterator, it becomes a lot easier. And long as you can kind of keep that in your mind, async is very, very simple in Rust. It's all the crap around async that gets really, really more annoying. The name again is the Async Agent.